The story was focusing on Michael Pearson, the famous drug kingpin in England. Michael was known as a very powerful person because he was able to control many nobles. Not only that, the marijuana in Michael's garden was also known to be of high quality and the most sought after. Even so, Michael planned to retire and intended to sell his business to a mafia. Here, the problems started to arise such as competition between cartels, killing each other, and much more. Michael is a drug dealer who has the largest marijuana plantation in England. One morning as usual, he had breakfast at his favorite restaurant. But while he was calling his wife, suddenly, a man in a black robe appeared and the man took out a gun from under his shirt. The scene then showed a man named Raymond, Michael's accomplice. He just arrived at his house and he was shocked because at his house, there was a man named Fletcher. Fletcher is a private detective who claims to be paid by the editor of a magazine named Big Dave to investigate the drug business run by Michael. During the investigation process, it turned out that Fletcher found a lot of information which, if published, could immediately destroy Michael's career and reputation. Fletcher offered a deal. He would not give the information he got to Dave if Michael was willing to pay him 20 million pounds sterling. At first, Raymond just laughed and didn't believe what Fletcher was saying. So here, Fletcher started to tell all the information he got so that Raymond would believe him. Fletcher then told a story how Michael was able to become a respected drug kingpin. Michael was born in poor family from America. But since childhood, he was an intelligent child and because of his intelligence, he earned a scholarship to study at a well-known university in England, Oxford University. Unfortunately, when Michael should spend the time studying, he instead spent it to learn about marijuana cultivation, which he then distributed it to his friends. Michael's first customer was the son of rich people and the business that Michael ran is getting bigger. The quality of the marijuana sold by Michael was very good, so that as time went by, new customers continued to arrive. In addition to the new customers who continued to come, Michael also dared to get rid of anyone who tries to take over his territory. Even though at that time Michael was standing and working alone, but his guts cannot be underestimated at all. Michael had to be number one and no one should bother his business. His hard work, guts and more relations finally led Michael to become the number one drug dealer in England. Now his life is very happy. Everything is structured and there is no one left who can control Michael's life or business. At his middle age, Michael intends to sell his empire to a billionaire named Matthew Berger for $400 million. Before continuing the story, Fletcher reiterates that 20 million piece sterling is a small nominal compared to the sales value of Michael's business which reached $400 million. Before continuing his story, Fletcher emphasized again that 20 million pounds sterling was a small amount compared to the sales value of Michael's business which reached $400 million. At this moment, Fletcher also explained why Dave paid him to spy on Michael. All of this happened because previously, Dave had been humiliated at a conglomerate party. There, Michael didn't return Dave's handshake even though that famous editor had invited Michael to shake hands. Turns out, Michael had a reason why he refused the handshake. Dave apparently exposed a scandal committed by a nobleman who was Michael's friend. When the scandal went viral in England, not only was his family destroyed but also his career. Fletcher then continued the story and began to mention the quality of Michael's marijuana which was considered the most premium in England. Which shocked Raymond the most, Fletcher also admitted that he knew where the plantation was located. Michael saw an opportunity for the nobles who had financial problems, especially regarding the operational problems of their houses. Michael rented the land behind the nobles' houses to use as gardens and they didn't care as long as Michael paid handsomely. Fletcher also found out that Michael had taken Matthew to one of his marijuana gardens which was behind the house of a nobleman named Henry. Matthew was taken to an old container and inside there was only a shabby and old wooden table. However, Matthew immediately fell silent when the shabby table was moved and beneath it, there was a huge room like a laboratory. There were lined marijuana plants growing in abundance. Michael began to present that his garden had the most advanced technology. Botanist who takes care of it is also the best person in that field. This will all belong to Matthew if he wants to buy it. And according to Michael, $400 million is the best price for all the facilities and the business because Matthew just need to continue it. Matthew then asked Michael's reason for selling his business. Because if it was so promising, Michael shouldn't have sell it. Michael then casually answered that he wanted to live more peacefully in the countryside with his family. Matthew then asked to be informed of Michael's sales network because it would be useless if he had quality marijuana but couldn't sell it. But Michael emphasized that he would only provide this information after his business was bought. The news that Michael wants to retire from his business has also been heard by his relatives and one of them is Dry. He is an accomplice of Lord George, the heroin mafia who controls most of China. Without further ado, Dry immediately bid for Michael's business, but the offer was politely rejected considering the price offered was very far from what Michael wanted. Michael only answered that he would think about it first and then send updated news if he was interested. While eating a steak, 
Fletcher revealed that he also knew that one of Michael's marijuana plantations had just been robbed. Raymond then let Fletcher continue his story. There were five amateur athletes who got information from a person named Fuca about an underground warehouse that stored a lot of marijuana. They decided to steal it and create content for YouTube. When they arrived at their destination, they were shocked when they saw rows of marijuana plants and dozens of boxes containing dried marijuana. Not long after, several guards arrived and a fight ensued. The action was recorded with a camera which was then uploaded to the internet. But not long after the video was broadcast, their coach, Rudy, came to the training ground and asked for the content to be deleted immediately. In another place, Michael saw the footage of the theft and responded to it calmly. He didn't accuse anyone, it's just that his garden was broken. After telling Matthew the location and refusing Dry's offer, Michael was surprised because all this time the garden had been safe. There had never been a single case of theft. Somehow Matthew seemed to know about the theft and offered Michael with security assistance. Of course, Michael refused the help and stated that his garden was safe and there had never been any problems. Before leaving, Matthew gave Michael a gift. It was a box containing a gold minigun. So that the problem wouldn't get any bigger, Michael decided to close the garden which had been robbed and of course this made Henry, the landowner, had no more income. Because he felt he had no more income to take care of his land and house, Henry said that he would immediately move from there. Michael, who felt sorry for Henry, finally gave him a new residence. Michael then went to meet another nobleman, Pressfield. At that meeting, Pressfield told Michael that his daughter, Laura, was addicted to drugs and now running away. This made Pressfield sad and he continued to blame himself. Once again, Michael feels sorry for him and intends to help Pressfield look for Laura until they find her. After that, Michael immediately ordered Raymond to look for Laura. Before that, it turns out that Raymond has tracked Laura and already knows her location. Despite Raymond's suggested that Michael not interfere in this matter because Laura's location was outside his area. However, Michael didn't care and still ordered Raymond to immediately pick up Laura. Raymond immediately went to the apartment where Laura was. With a little force, finally, Raymond and two of his men managed to enter the apartment and found Laura partying drugs with her friends. Raymond tried to ask Laura home in a good way, and he also reminded Laura's friends that heroin is a drug that should never be tried. Raymond tried to talk calmly, even though occasionally Laura's friends rebelled and chased him away. But gradually, Laura finally agreed and wanted to go home. Seeing this, a man who seemed to like Laura tried to block her way until Raymond was forced to hit him. Before leaving the room, Raymond asked one of his men to teach them a lesson. Here, a tragedy happened to one of Laura's friends, Oslin. He died falling from the apartment. Unluckily, downstairs, there were three delinquent teenagers who were teasing Raymond's man who was on guard. Those teenagers immediately recorded what happened, and like it or not, Raymond had to take their cell phones before they spread to the internet. Raymond was cornered in a tunnel, and there were lots of boys of gangsters there. As usual, Raymond spoke nicely. In fact, he intended to buy the kid's cell phone with quite a lot of money. But they thought that Raymond was afraid, so one of the young men there came forward carrying a knife. Feeling that it was a waste of time, Raymond finally took out his machine gun. At this moment, Raymond said that Fletcher had deliberately made up the story. Fletcher then laughed at Raymond by showing him a photo shortly after Aslan fell down. Actually, Fletcher was at the scene and captured everything that happened there with his camera. Before continuing the story, Fletcher asked permission to go to the toilet. And when he was going back, he passed two Raymond's men who were carrying Aslan's body. There was some awkwardness between them, but Fletcher, who didn't want to get involved in the problem, pretended not to see anything. Meanwhile, at another place, Rudy was worried what his students did yesterday would be a big problem, especially since they took quite a lot of marijuana plants. Rudy is sure that the garden must be owned by a big mafia, and he doesn't want his students to be targeted or possibly killed. Rudy then asks his acquaintance to find out who owns the plants that have been stolen by his students, but Rudy's acquaintance doesn't know and haven't heard the news about the theft. However, Rudy's acquaintance said to him that hopefully the leaves that were stolen did not belong to Michael Pearson. Because if the plants belonged to him, then things could be complicated. Here, Rudy was increasingly worried. Plus, Ernie, one of his students, said that according to Fuca, the person who provided the information, the garden belonged to someone named Michael. Rudy felt that this problem had to be resolved immediately. Therefore, he asked Ernie to take Fuca to the training ground. The next day, Rudy came to Raymond's place and admitted that yesterday's marijuana theft was the work of his students. With all this heart, Rudy asked and apologized and ready to bear the consequences. Rudy promises that yesterday's incident will never happen again and he is ready to guarantee his life if his students dare to act again. Raymond is willing to forgive Rudy's students as long as Rudy is willing to do several things and one of which is explaining how the students can know the location of the garden. Rudy then takes Raymond to the trunk of his car in which there is a person named Fuca who gave information to Rudy's students. Amidst his fear, Fuca tells them that he is just an errand boy. 
When he was asked who sent him, Fuka says it was dry. Unfortunately, Fuka had to die while trying to escape and fell onto the train track. After that, Raymond reported it to Michael and the two of them immediately went to Dry's boss, George. Michael started the conversation by lecturing George that his heroin business was destroying people, unlike his business which came from pure plants. Of course, George was confused because Michael came and immediately got angry, whereas when asked what the problem was, Michael didn't give any answer. Without giving much opportunity to speak, Michael immediately cursed at George and asked him to stop destroying his business. Michael threatened that if Dry did anything wrong again, he would not hesitate to kill George and destroy all George's business. At the same time, Michael ordered his men to come to the warehouse where George packaged the heroin and the warehouse was burned to the ground. Before leaving, Michael gave George an antidote because the tea George had been drinking had apparently been poisoned. After that, George met Dry and asked what he had done to Michael. It turns out that what Fuka did was an order from Dry who wanted to ruin Michael's business. When he was reminded by George, Dry got angry and said that George was too old to lead the gang. This action made George order one of his men to kill Dry. However, unfortunately, the man instead killed George. Dry then tried to wash his hands by spreading rumors that George's death was Michael's doing due to business competition. To continue the story, Fletcher finally spilled that Matthew was actually working with Dry. To prove his statement, Fletcher showed a photo when Matthew and Dry met at a stadium during a Premier League match. From here, it makes sense why the other day Matthew came to offer security assistance after there was a theft incident. Not long after, George was buried and Dry is now officially occupying George's previous position. All this time, it turns out there is still someone in power above George, and he is often called Uncle. He asked Dry to kill Michael as an attempt to take revenge for George's death. Well, we arrive at the initial scene. The blood that spurted into the glass turned out not to be Michael's blood. Apparently, it was the man's blood who tried to kill Michael, but was thwarted by Raymond. Amazingly, Fletcher was at the scene and once again he captured the moments he saw. Michael and Raymond immediately rushed to the repair shop because the phone call with Rose had suddenly disconnected for no apparent reason. As fast as possible, Michael drove his car and Raymond tried to contact Rose, but there was no answer. When Michael focused on the speed of his car and that's when a truck passed from the other direction. Dry and two of his men tried to kidnap Rose, but she tried to buy the time by pointing a gun that had been given by Matthew. At this moment, Dry actually laughed and didn't believe that the gun held by Rose could endanger his life. Not long after, one of Dry's men came forward and he fell after one shot hit him in the head. Dry's another man also tried to move forward and he had the same fate as his friend who fell with a shot right in the head. At the same time, Michael ran towards the workshop because it happened that the distance to the workshop was near. Rose seems to have to give up when the bullets for the gun run out and Dry tries to rape her. Luckily, Michael arrives on time and shoots Dry to death. Here, Fletcher explains the main point of the whole story that he has told. Matthew is the mastermind behind everything. He asks Dry to make a scene in one of Michael's marijuana gardens so that the price will be cheaper. Of course, Matthew will give a commensurate reward that later, Dry will be his accomplice who takes care of all the marijuana business that has been purchased from Michael. Fletcher gives 72 hours to prepare 20 million pounds sterling before all the information he had reached Dave and was published in the magazine. Fletcher emphasized that he had kept all the evidence he got in two different places just in case something bad happened to him. However, Raymond already have a way to solve this problem. The first thing he did was tell Rudy to meet Dave. The next day, Ernie and his friends were assigned to kidnap Dave and take him to somewhere. The kidnapping was not as difficult as imagined. It turned out that with just a little bit of snapping, Dave could be kidnapped easily without putting up any resistance. The next day, Dave woke up in an old car that was in a pigsty. Rudy was already there and calmed Dave down, who looked panicked because he woke up naked, only covered with a blanket. That's when Rudy told what Dave had been through all night. Last night, it turned out that Rudy had made a film where Dave makes love with a pig. Rudy explains that the anesthetic he was injected with yesterday apparently made Dave very lustful and everything was recorded clearly on the laptop, which is now in front of Dave. Before leaving, Rudy says the video will never be spread widely as long as Dave stops finding out about Michael and all his business. After that, Raymond asked for one more thing that Rudy had to do so that the marijuana theft problem was deemed even. Rudy had actually objected, but he was willing to do it for the last time. The next day, Michael took Matthew to his fish factory, which was used as a place for packaging marijuana. While walking around, Matthew opened a conversation about the price that Michael had previously offered, $400 million for 12 plantations. Matthew objected to that price, considering that one plantation had been closed due to theft. After calculating and considering all the risks, Matthew only wanted to pay $130 million. This was considered as an insult, but Michael remained calm and took Matthew to one of the cold rooms. 
In that room, there was Dry's corpse. Matthew tried to hold back his feelings of fear and admitted that he didn't recognize the man in front of him. Unfortunately, he could no longer avoid it when Michael showed him a photo of the moment when Matthew met Dry at a football match. Michael gave Matthew the opportunity to leave with two conditions. First, Matthew had to transfer the difference in the price he had bargained for $270 million. Second, because of Matthew's actions, Rose was affected, and to make up for this, Michael asked for half a kilogram of flesh from Matthew's body. To add the excitement, Matthew was asked to do the two things in the cold room. If there was one thing that hadn't been done, the cold room wouldn't open and Matthew was guaranteed to freeze within one hour. At the same time, Fletcher, Raymond, and Rudy met. Fletcher came there because he thought he would be paid. But it turns out that Raymond already had two items of evidence which had been hidden by Fletcher. Thanks to Rudy's help and also the tracking device that was attached to Fletcher's shoes when he went to the bathroom. Fletcher ended up going into the box that Raymond had prepared. However, who would have thought it turns out that Fletcher still has other information which he thinks is very important. This information is about Aslan, the young man who fell to his death from balcony. Raymond or Michael didn't think that Aslan was the son of a Russian mafia leader who was also famous in England. They were planning revenge and Fletcher had sold Raymond and Michael's address to them. Fletcher was very sure that they were currently on their way to this place and also to Michael's place. Raymond immediately became alert and not long after that, shots were heard which turned out to be Rudy's success in killing two strangers who were trying to enter through the back door. Raymond tried reminding Michael but it was too late because when the message came in, Michael was already in the car in which there were two members of the Russian Mafia who were ready to shoot Michael dead. At this moment, Michael had given up, but unexpectedly, Ernie and several of his friends overtaking from the side. Ernie's real goal was to kill Michael because he felt that his teacher was always being ordered around. But his actions actually saved Michael from death. Michael was finally able to return home safely and be reunited with his wife. This film depicts the world of the drug business, which is filled with cunning and greedy people. They are two-faced and have only one main goal to benefit themselves. However, in this film, the characters Michael and Raymond are depicted as not greedy but brutal when they have to defend what is theirs.